Look, for folks like us, the Universal Disney rivalry is largely about theme parks, but that rivalry began long before theme parks entered the picture. It all started with one character, so who else could take the number one slot but Oswald the Lucky Rabbit? Yes, Walt Disney and Ub Iwerks created Oswald for Charles Mintz and Universal. Universal named the character, but they let Disney choose the animal as long as it wasn't a cat because, and I quote, there are too many cats on the market. I bet Universal wishes they still had that mandate. Oswald shorts were Disney's most successful to date, and Universal wanted them cranked out even faster. So Charles Mintz started forming another team consisting of many of Walt's animators, but no Walt. And that simply would not do. Walt would never stand for a secondary team cranking out inferior products with his beloved characters. Incidentally, all the direct-to-video Disney Toon Studio sequels are now available on Disney+. So Walt went to New York City to personally negotiate with Charles Mintz, and he was even cocky enough to ask for an increased budget for the Oswald shorts. And instead, Mintz offered him a 20% pay decrease and even proposed a deal that would involve taking over the Disney Studios altogether. Walt was a bit dejected by this. And that was when Walt Disney vowed he would never again create a character without owning it wholesale. He would just make other people create characters and not let them own them so he could own them wholesale. And the company would follow suit. Yeah, Walt did a lot of great and groundbreaking things in entertainment, but he was kind of a screw you, I got mine guy. But the meeting was kind of a blessing in disguise, because that's what propelled Walt Disney to have the brilliant, groundbreaking, world-changing idea, what if I made more Oswald shorts anyway, but just changed the shape of his ears? So Mickey Mouse was born, and he became an even bigger international superstar and put Walt in a position where he could keep breaking new ground and making new successes, and it would forever be his name on all of his staff's work, not Charles Mintz's name. Anyway, Universal barely did anything with Oswald for a billion years, and Bob Iger was about to begin his let's own everything kick, so he thought, we should probably own such an important piece of our company's history, right? It's not like the current owners are doing anything with it. So Bob went to Universal, who agreed to trade Oswald for an ESPN sportscaster. Who says the entertainment industry has little regard for human life? Listen, Billy, you've been a wonderful employee for the last 20 years, truly essential to the company. We couldn't have built it without you. But uh, the fact remains that we have a once in a lifetime opportunity to acquire the exclusive rights to a scene from an old Buster Keaton movie. Yeah, not that one, the one you've never heard of. Uh, the point is we're trading you to Sony and uh, have fun. Now, now, Bill, tears are a woman's weapon. Don't use those against me. Just get packed. Your flight to Malaysia leaves on Tuesday. Okay, maybe I'm being unfair. By all accounts, Al Michaels actually wanted to go to NBC, so the trade was more of a, hey, as long as you're heading over to Universal City, would you mind picking up this old rabbit for us? So now, after years of Universal doing nothing with him, Oswald is back in Disney's hands, and they've done a few things with him. His most prominent roles are a video game series and a gift shop and meet and greet in DCA. Other than that, he has been relegated to cameos. But they own him again and Universal doesn't and that's what's important. And now Disney and Universal can just go back to fighting over all the other characters that they actually do things with. 